Hi, Andrew Kramer here, and welcome to my After Effects frame rate conversion tutorial. Okay, the truth is, this tutorial is not going to impress your friends. You're not going to be like, hey, you will not believe this. You have to come over to my house right now, watch this. And you play it back, and they're looking at it and thinking, okay, what's the big deal? And you're like, dude, I just converted 30 frame per second footage to 24p. Don't you get it? And at that point, they're going to leave just before taking a soda out of your refrigerator. So unfortunately, you're not going to be scoring any points with the ladies. Um, however, if you have any really, you know, nerdy friends that are into, you know, technical specifications, uh, video formats, you might get some acknowledgement there, but, you know, that's not really going to help your self-esteem. Um, in fact, it may even diminish it further. Now then, in this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating an effective way to convert your frame rate to another frame rate. For example, if you're working, say, in a 30 frames per second NTSC project and you're given some 24p footage, how am I going to get that footage to be conformed to, you know, your actual project? Or for you filmmakers who want to convert your 60i or 29.97 frame per second footage to 24p, this will work pretty well for you. Additionally, if you're doing a PAL to NTSC conversion or vice versa, you should also get some use out of this technique. I'm going to be demonstrating this on a few different levels. I have some 24p footage, some 60i footage, which is 29.97 frames per second, and some 30p motion graphics work as well. If you'd like to get some more information about frame rates and such, check out your online encyclopedia and just type in frame rate and there's some different information about uh, different formats. But as long as you have a basic understanding, um, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I want to do is convert this 60i footage into 24p progressive. Now as you can see, this footage is interlaced and right. Now the first step in this process is to right click on your footage, choose interpret footage main. Now our actual frame rate of this footage is 29.97 and we have this option to conform to frame rate. Now in this case I want to convert this footage to 24 frames per second NTSC. So that actually computes to 23.976. And in this case the footage is interlaced so I want to separate the fields lower first. Now if you're working with PAL I believe it's upper fields first and I want to preserve edges and this will actually make for a little bit better deinterlace. So I'm going to check this box and choose OK. Now this footage that was 29.97 frames per second is now interpreted as 23.976. Then I'm going to take this footage and drag it into the new comp button. So what we've created now by dragging it into this comp button is a composition exactly the same frame rate and format as your footage. So it's NTSC and because we interpreted it as 23.976, the comp is also set that way. So I'm going to choose OK. Now if I play this back, it's going to be slightly problematic. Now you probably can't tell because of the uh, screen recording, but playing back 30 frames per second at 24 frames per second basically makes your footage in slow motion. So we don't want to do that. We want our footage to run at 24 frames per second, but run in real time. So we're going to have to create some intermediate frames as well as drop some frames, um, but luckily you don't even have to worry about that. What you're going to do is come over to the effects and presets, pull down your animation presets, go down to Andrew Kramer and take the FPS converter and in here is a preset and what you're going to do is drag that right onto your footage. And now we're given a couple of options in our effects control and if that's not up just hit F3 and we have our actual source frame rate. So what is the real frame rate of this footage? You have to tell the truth otherwise it's not going to work. So in this case it's 29.97 and our target frame rate is 23.976 or 24p. Click away and now let's go ahead and preview this. Okay, let's go ahead and play that back. Okay, and if we pull up our info, we can see that the footage is actually running at 23.976 frames per second and obviously you can't tell because of the screen recording but you're just gonna have to try this for yourself but the footage is very very smooth and looks pretty good but I know what you're thinking 
that's a pretty long hug. And I agree with you. Um, but, you know, it was their wedding day. And, you know, people are just happier, you know, generally in, on, on weddings, I suppose. But let's take a look at another project. So here we have some 24p footage, and I want to convert this to, say, 30 frames per second. So again, right click, interpret footage, main, conform the frame rate to your target frame rate, in this case, 30 frames per second, or if we want to be technical, 29.97. And in this case, there are no fields, so we're going to leave it to separate off. And I'm going to choose OK. Then I'm going to drag this into the Make New Comp button. And we've created a comp with the frame rate of the footage as it is interpreted. In this case, 29.97. But let's remember it is 24p footage. Then I'm going to take our trusty frame rate converter, drag it out. Actual source frame rate, 23.976. It's actually preset to that. And our target frame rate is actually preset to 29.976. So that's actually all we have to do. And let's go ahead and preview this. And as you can see, we're now running at 29.97 frames per second. And I will show you that we are actually not duplicating frames either. If I go through here, page down, you can see that there's actually a unique frame every single way we go. So that's important to know because there's other ways to convert footage, but you don't get that frame interpolation, those intermediate frames. Um, it's more of uh, blending or it just picks the closest one. Um, and those can be effective methods, especially if you're uh, in a hurry and things like that. Um, this method does take a little bit of time to render, but if you need the extra horsepower, just hook up your PlayStation 3 on like a render farm and just you know shoot all your After Effects projects out to that. Um, I find that to be very effective. Now I will point out that this footage is 24p to start. It does not have a pull down um, cadence inside of it. So what I mean is it was shot 24p but the cadence was removed and then rendered into a movie file. So if you have footage that is 24p advanced or has like a pull down in inside of it, you need to remove that first before you actually run this process. Now, let's take it another step. Here I have Serious Effects, which is now 30p. Now, this is motion graphics. Um, so I just wanted to point out how this works. And this is 30 frames per second. I'm gonna right click, interpret footage, main. And in this case, I wanna convert this to PAL. I'm making a PAL DVD. I'm not really, but just pretend I am. I'm making a PAL DVD and I need to convert this to 25 frames per second and this is motion graphics or so there are no fields so I'm going to leave that to off I'm going to choose OK and then I'm going to drag it into the make new comp and right now it's not going to be playing back correctly but that's okay and so it's a little bit slow not quite what I would like so what we're going to do is take the frame rate converter drag it into our footage and in this case our actual source is 30 frames per second and our target frame rate is 25. Now I'm going to play this back and I want to point out a few things. Okay, this looks pretty good, but if we go in here, we're going to actually see a problem. Okay, right there. This is what we call the motion vector artifacts. Okay, this is generally not a good thing, but basically what's happening is we are creating intermediate frames and After Effects is trying to figure out what is supposed to be in between here and here so so in its struggle it's trying to figure it out but this is so blurred out it can't quite figure it out so it causes this warping um, and this artifacting so this is sort of the side effect of this procedure however there are ways to refine it so if we go over to our frame rate warp we can come down to our tuning and play around with some settings. Now I don't want to get too much into this, but if you play with these settings, you should be able to refine it to get a really, really clean conversion. Now I have this air threshold slider, and in this case we have a really big problem. So I'm gonna up this to about 40 and hit enter. So now you see we've somewhat eliminated it, but here's what's happening when we play with the air threshold when it can't quite figure out what's supposed to be from here to there because of motion blur or something like that in your actual footage you want to tell it if it can't figure it out then just blend the frames together so the air threshold is essentially going to blend the frames together when it can't figure it out but guess what usually it's times when there's high motion and things going on where you can't really tell 
that say the frames are being blended. It's almost as if it's its own built-in motion blur. So it is sort of a side effect, but you can certainly uh, make your way around it. Now let's go ahead and preview this with our error threshold at 40. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play this back. Okay, so as you can see, if I go through here frame by frame, all the intermediate frames for when there's not a lot of motion look great. And then once the motion kicks in, you can see it also looks pretty good. Um, minus the fact that After Effects doesn't know how to handle motion blur, but that's a story for another day. Now, a real quick insert here. If you are doing like an NTSC to PAL conversion, you also need to change the actual frame size of the composition. So go to your composition settings and just change it to the preset that um, is what you're looking to change it to. So in this case, PAL, and make sure it is the frame rate that you plan to convert to. So in this case, 25. Now the frame size in NTSC is a little bit less than PAL resolution, so you're going to right click, choose transform fit to comp width, or transform fit to comp height, um, and depending on how you're trying to convert it, you can use either of those options, so if you want a letterbox or not. And one last thing, when you do do a conversion from a lower frame rate to a higher frame rate, you may notice that the composition cuts off your clip um, before it ends, and that's just because there aren't enough frames to generate the entire video. So simply go into your footage, interpret, main, and just add a loop to, to it, say like two. And then in your composition, just extend it um, whatever is necessary. So 25 seconds instead of just 18 zoom out and then just extend your footage. In this case we're actually going from a higher frame rate to a lower frame rate so essentially the animation is going to be shorter than what our composition shows but now if you want to find the exact change just right click on your footage interpret main and if it's set to conform the frame rate you'll see what the actual length of it is going to be but if you go to the use frame rate in this case it's 15 seconds in one frame when we conform it it's 18 seconds in one frame but you actually only need to make your composition as long as the actual source. So in this case, we really only need to make it 15 seconds and one, and that will play out the entire animation from beginning to end. And of course, if you're going from lower to higher, make sure you use the loop option to set your composition length. And now if I come down to my 24p timeline, and if you remember, this is where we converted 24p footage now right now we are using pixel motion as the method in which to create our intermediate frames. However, if we use frame mix or frame blend, you can see here we actually are creating blended motion. Now the good thing about this is it's all calculated automatically for you. So, so the footage is running at the proper frame rate in order to um, function correctly. However, yes, you are going to create this weird almost like warping when you have fast motion so not necessarily the best case for every scenario but it's lightning fast when it renders because there's no real you know computing going on so that's a good option say if you're just you know you're converting a lot of footage to you know a different frame rate to use in um, a DVD project now whole frames will actually just double frames um, so it's kind of what you can achieve in After Effects without any of this stuff. However, the good thing about this is just while you're working, you know, you're just checking to make sure things are in sync, use whole frames, and then once you're satisfied, you can switch back to pixel motion. So consider it like a draft quality, something to that effect. Now you're probably asking yourself, okay, now where do I get this fancy frame rate converter? Well, you can actually download it from the website, and it comes as a, an FX preset and you just take that folder, drop it into the presets folder in your After Effects directory and it will populate in your effects and preset list. So not to worry. Now, some of you out there are probably thinking to yourself, I may not be an idiot, but I know that this frame rate warp is actually nothing more than the time, time warp effect. And you know what? Good for you, you're absolutely right. So what I'm going to do is show you how I created the frame rate converter preset. Now a magician usually doesn't show off his tricks, but I'm not a magician. Um, I went to magician school, it didn't really work out. Um, it just the sleight of hand thing, I just couldn't quite hack it. And, uh, and I'm still paying off my uh, magician loans, but anyway, um, not important. Um, 
the point is, I'm going to show you how to create this. Um, so if you don't want to download the preset, you know, you can build it yourself. Now this will only essentially work in After Effects 7 unless you have Twixter. If you have Twixter, you can set it up the same way using the same expressions, just using the Twixter's plugin as the base. So basically how this works is there's two expression sliders, okay, and they're linked up to the time warp speed adjustment. So if I come over here in the comp, hit U, I can see what I've done here. I've taken the effect, actual source frame rate, up here, actual source frame rate, slider, so this value, divided by, so we have a little division sign, effect target frame rate, effect target frame rate, slider, this value, times 100. And because our speed is based on 100%, multiply times 100, and we can create a value that is pertinent to creating a frame rate conversion. Okay, well I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you want to take this to the next level, say with some color timing, please check out Film Magic Pro. Um, there's some really, really great preset cinema styles to just give you some nice looks now that you have your uh, frame rates in order. So depending on what you're looking for, you can actually achieve some nice looks um, with these presets. And of course, you can make adjustments and all that good stuff. Okay, that's it. My name's Andrew Kramer, and feel free to visit me on creativecow.net in the After Effects and Photoshop forums, or visit my website at www.videocopilot.net. Thanks for watching.